Well, hey, everybody. My name is Jared Malat. I'm here with my good friend, Mateo Caliz, and this is The Cultist, Season 2, Episode number 13, the T.Y. Hilton episode. Yeah. And show it off, my man. Got a... This uh, is like supposedly, you know, an, an official jersey. Yeah. I don't know if you can... I mean, I never Hilton, saw the Colts wearing this, you know, this type of jersey with like no. the dots here. But, you know, the fabric's really good quality. And it's the only thing I get from the Colts down here in Argentina. It's not much more than this. <laughs> like... <laughs> But yeah, you, you take what you can get, man. Yeah, <laughs> you absolutely. You just go ahead and take it. And speaking of taking what we can get, we can get right into it. The the any we we today we're gonna talk about the Indiana Pacers first because they got a win most recently and they're actually on the clock right now. Nine minutes left in the first quarter, uh, tied with the Bulls at ten. Um, but this podcast is unique in that it is a two sport podcast. Most of the time when you're uh, listen to a podcast. They're just talking about a singular sport. Uh, we cover the Indiana Pacers and the Indianapolis Colts, right? And so this week we, we decided, hey, let's talk about the Pacers first since they just got a win and kind of got off the schneid the other night. Uh, and then, like I said, now they're they're in a game. Uh, so obvious, obviously before uh, the Pacers beat the Rockets and Aaron Brooks, by the way, the the highlight of the game will be Aaron Brooks standing over Halliburton as he kind of struggles to get up and he's giving him the business, right? Just keep this in mind. Aaron Brooks had nine points and was negative 15. So it's not, it's not like that. Other than that little highlight there, it's not like he was doing much else. <laughs> but the, the Pacers had lost uh, six of seven. Yeah, right. yeah, it's gotten ugly. Uh, so it was getting kind of ugly, and and it's like you, you and I had even kind of talked uh privately, where you're like, you know, you kind of got to win one of these, or heads start to roll. You know, they'll they'll trade somebody, they'll fire coach, like they'll figure out what's wrong. Um, so yeah, good to see the the Pacers uh beat the Rockets, uh, and then obviously a little over a little over five hundred, um, you know, and they've and they've beat Milwaukee. Right, so it's it's not like they haven't yeah, beat the like, best yeah. in their division. You know, they're they're certainly capable. Uh, I I don't know about you, but them them dropping six of seven games was a shock, right? Um, kind of reminds me of the of the Chargers in the NFL to kind of skip around a little bit because yeah. the Chargers, regardless of personnel, every week when I'm looking at who they're playing, I'm like, oh wow, they're losing that game too. That's tough. Um, so yeah, the, the Pacers, uh, just had a, just had a little rough stretch there. I mean, you had to play, um, the Timberwolves and Clippers back to back, uh, right after playing the Bucks, you know what I mean? So it's like three or four games against heavy. Yeah. Hitters, you get, right? you get the Grizzlies with, with Jab back and they're not, of course they're a different team with him in the mix. Right. Some of those perhaps were a bit, you know, disappointing. Like I believe there was a loss to the, to the Wizards, like a blowout to the Wizards. Mm-hmm. A uh, blowout loss to the Wizards and a blowout loss. Ah, yeah, to by the fourteen. Wolves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And a blowout to the Timberwolves. A blowout to the Clippers. Yeah. Then we blew out the Hornets. Yeah. We double digits against the Grizzlies. We lost against the Magic. And now the Rockets. Hopefully, we we managed to to beat the the Bulls because then it gets ugly again. It's Knicks, Bucks again, Bucks again, then the Celtics twice in a row. Yeah. Before, so, th- so yeah, they've yeah. definitely got some big games coming, and yeah. I'll, al- I'll always wonder if the team is gaming the game and getting up for these big games because they know they got stretches of just night, you know, night after night where you got just like big games yeah. where you see them uh, kind of resting in these games because there's, first of all, no reason you should be giving up 140, 150 points a game. No, nah. that's absurd. I'm not saying that you don't want to score 140, 150 points a game, but like to allow that many points is like he, we got to be doing something. And, and then they have, they, they signed uh, James Johnson. Like they're making attempts to, to put some heft out on the, on the, on the floor uh, and, and defend just a little geez. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, and the thing about the Pacers is I heard this a long time ago that uh, Miles Turner is deceptively bad on defense. Like sure, yeah. he's a good shot blocker, uh huh. 
but a lot yeah, of times not... he leaves his man to make that block, leaving his man wide open if he misses. And then in that case, you're just giving him the bunny. Yeah, you just yeah. And he's also I kind of a think... liability with a guy that's good with the ball in his hands because he's kind of a, a tall guy. So like he's just gonna drive around him. Um. So and again, I'm not. Those aren't my words. That's what somebody told me. Um, so it doesn't necessarily surprise me that you have a, a guard that's as good a scorer and passer that's not a good defender, right? It, it doesn't surprise yeah. me, right? It's hard to do all of the things. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, the Pacers are just so dang young that at this point, all the all these wins are early. You know, a lot of the I mean, look at the look at the Detroit Pistons. Right, they're certainly a young, a younger, less experienced, less talented team, but they've now lost, I believe, like 27, 28 games in a row. Right, yeah. so obviously we're far away from that, and we have just as young a roster. You know what I mean? We we may have more more talented roster, but just as young. Um, and and like I said, a lot of the like the the move to to resign Nesmith before he really had a chance to uh, is that how you say his name? Yeah, Aaron Nesmith. Yeah. Nesmith. Yeah, he before he really blossomed, and then he blossomed, and you, you watch him in real time, and you're like, "Oh wow, he's really tough, right?" But, hey, that's some foresight on the on the uh, behalf of the Pacers, uh, which again, you know, God, we're far. I feel like we're far away from um, Malice in the Palace. You know what I mean? I feel like we're in the the thick of it. We're keeping up with these big teams. Obviously, you're going to have bad nights. Unfortunately, it looks like you're going to have about four of those in a row. Um, but you got to have those runs too, right? You got to have the the four games in a row you drop. You know what I mean? You got to get to the spot where they've won three, four, or five, and stuff like that. So they they've certainly had their their swings. Um, and 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 like you said, it'd be nice to get a win tonight. That's two in a row. Just, yeah. And start stringing yeah, them together. So like, start knocking off these big, these big heavy hitters, right? Yeah. In, in my opinion, though, they do need like this. This sort of losing streak that they they have recently been in. It's mm-hmm. a wake up call. Like you can, I mean, you can get a winning streak streak going. You can get a few few wings strung together, but you're not gonna contend with with this core. Like I, I strongly believe. That the team still needs uh like a true rim protector, a true defensive presence inside. I think the way you know Carl Anthony Towns, Joel and Bid Giannis. Yeah. Also, you know, the, the way that the conference works, you have Jason Tatum, who's a forward, who's big. You have Giannis, of course, you know, he's massive. Yeah. You have Joel Embiid, who's really big. So you need a guy that can guard, you know, I'm, I'm not saying like shut down because you don't shut down a player like Giannis. Right. You just try and contain him. And we don't have that guy. I mean, he went off for like, what, 50 points, then 60. Like, I, I believe he had something like 110 points in two games. I mean, that's a wake up call. You're not, I mean, you're not, you're not able to stop him. Miles Turner is not able to stop the guy. Miles, right. Miles Turner has never been able to, to stop anyone he gets blocks yeah but i mean he's not a and i mean of course i'm i'm, I'm saying the, the best but he's not like a rudy gobert like a true the de- interior defensive no. presence inside someone you I don't want to drive against he, he's kind of yeah. someone you're willing to test you know what i mean yeah of course you're willing to test him you're willing to go at him because he's not i mean sure he gets the blocks but it's um he, he, you know, watching the game, like if you if you just watch, you know, the stat shit after the game and you say, oh, hey, you know, Miles Turner, he had four blocks. Like he's a really good defensive player. But if you watch the game, you see, OK, yeah, he got four blocks, but he gave up also like 20, 25 easy baskets a game. We're like, hey, man, that's probably not what you're supposed to be doing in this position. And you look out of place. And I mean, I'm not, I, I'm going to be honest, you know, I never played organized basketball. Like I only watched it. So I may, yeah. ha- I, I may have no clue what I'm talking about, but even I, you know, myself as a fan who never played basketball, if I am able to say, Hey man, it kind of looks like you're not where you're supposed to be. Then I'm sure, you know, coaches and players are saying, Hey, this guy is never where he's supposed to be. Let's, let, let's attack him because you're giving up I mean, you're giving up 150 points a game. Yeah. 
there 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 is something that's not right there defensively. Right. That's and, undeniable. And, and as long as he's as long as he's facing the guy with the ball and that and he's able to track him, he's got a good chance of getting a hand on it and getting a block. But like if so, if that guy's crafty at all, he's scoring. And a lot of times on blocks, what they don't say is like that block that was a forced turnover, right? And a lot of times you get credit for a block, but you blocked it out of bounds. So they got the ball and they got to set up to take a shot. Awesome block, man. Like that's not game changing, right? Forcing turnovers, right? It is a is a definitely a problem with the Pacers. Yeah. Like when you just look at when I'm looking at the the yeah, when I'm looking at the NBA statistics here. Uh, the Pacers just aren't very good at forcing turnovers. That, again, is a symptom of being a young player, right? Like, if you were had a few more years on you, you'd know exactly how that dude dribbles and attacks. You know when he's crossing over. You know when he's pulling the ball back on his hip, and you can just take it from him. Um, so Pacers will figure that shit out as these guys get more time. Um, and like I said, I'm still, I'm still kind of hanging on to the – their performance in the in season tournament and how they're going to hang on to that, you know, hold on to that experience and when want to show the world, like how important that, that in season tournament was to development of this team. And obviously it starts with winning more than half your games. Right. Yeah. Um, like we talked about in episodes past, you know, just a couple of years ago, they only won like 27 games. Right. And then last year they won like 30 something games. Right. Well, this year to take the next step to get to playoffs, you're going to have to win 43 plus. Right. And so, yeah, pro- yeah, that range in that sort of range, like uh, being a 500 team, isn't going to make the, I don't think it makes the playoffs in the Eastern Conference this year. I could be wrong, um, but that's just like a general thing. Every it feels like every year it gets tighter um, as teams get better. The you know the wins all float to the top. Um, but yeah, the the Pacers uh, again mo- most nights ha- ha- in the last about year and a half have looked as long as Halliburton is playing. Uh, the Pacers have looked like a professional basketball team. Uh, and one and one that is capable and it isn't just a, you know another truck stop in the midwest you know what i mean um yeah. but yeah so we've, we've beat the pacers to death obviously like i said <laughs> got a big win the other night are engaged right now uh and are currently let's see i believe they're uh, losing by like five yeah, yeah five it's like four oh, minutes yeah. left in the Still, first yeah Twenty to twenty. Way too much. Yeah, way too much time remaining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about this outcome at all. Um but yeah, let's talk about the Colts, man. So obviously, uh it's been up and down lately. Yeah. Uh, but the Colts <laughs> the Colts got housed uh on the road in Atlanta against the Falcons, got beat uh twenty nine to ten. Uh it it goes without saying when you're missing Wide receiver one, uh, right tackle one, and I believe Juju Brents is he not slated as like their number one corner, or is he maybe number two? No, yeah, I believe it's Juju. Juju's number one. So yeah. you were missing cornerback one. Um, are you winning that game, or you know what I mean? Like, did you expect to be down? Oh, I don't know. I think that might be the right tackle. Might be the second number third most important offensive lineman you know what i mean like very important player also uh no no um they missing jonathan taylor nah zach moss was out zach moss was out was out yeah michael pittman was out yeah so i mean they're basically missing depth at running back they're missing their best receiver one of their starting offensive linemen and their best corner um against an Atlanta team that is like middling. That's like a yeah, middling ball club. I, I think but they're in it. They can they win lost. their division still. Yeah, but they lost like they lost seven to nine to the Panthers last week. And you're like, hey, you, you. But I, I think I have a theory that the NFC South. I have a theory that perhaps teams don't want to win that division because any teams that wins it. It's most likely, you know, a first round exit. I don't think any of those four teams wins a playoff game. Oh, and, you yeah. know, you give up, you give up instead of picking, you know, probably inside the top 10, 
Now you're peaking in the early 20s. And you're getting a first place, you know, first place schedule next season. So so you're playing your 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 schedule gets tougher because you won the division. You're like, I mean, I think of course, you know, you always want to make the playoff and you always want to be competitive. But right. the long-term ramifications of that are, hey, you know, this is a really, from what I've read, this is a really good draft class. And do you really want to be picking, like, do you really want to give up, you know, perhaps 10 draft draft positions just to get, you know, absolutely destroyed in the first round away from home because you're not even going to be hosting the game, probably. Right. And, yeah, you know, just like, yeah, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if winning that division is that big of a prize. Which is, which is, and in all appearances, it's. Hey, that's what the AFC South looks like, right? <laughs> nobody, nobody really wants it because, like you said, you're just giving up a bunch of draft position. Um, so I could see the Colts, uh, continuing the fold. You know, all 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 things considered, um, they are they are hosting. They have uh, won their last three games at home, the pay, the Colts. So it's not outside the realm of possibility to say, hey, getting Michael Pittman back and Braden Smith back is enough, and you're hosting a place that you've you've won three in a row uh, to say the Colts get over the hump and beat the Raiders. But here's the thing about the Raiders, okay? They, they may be the island of misfit toys, hmm. okay? They may have uh, a whole lot of nothing, and it just be Max Crosby. But and they may not. They may not even have Josh Jacobs, who is listed as a non-participant in a walkthrough today. So there's a high probability they don't even have their starting running back. But the power of collective effort and Antonio Pierce being a quality, yeah. NFL head coach candidate with a team that is behind him and and thinks like, hey, we can go into the house that Peyton built and beat these hapless Colts that have gotten blown out two of their last three weeks. You talk about Jekyll and Hyde. The Colts <laughs> get blown out on the road. Uh, yeah, the first last... against the Bengals. Yep. And then, you, of you course, they beat that. the piss out of the Steelers, right? And it's just like, that's so Jekyll and Hyde. A different yeah, team shows I, I up have, week to, every week. I have no idea which team is going to show up on <laughs> on Sunday. Like, you could tell me right now, hey, the Colts are going to lose by double digits. And I would say, yeah, you know, that would be realistic. You could also tell me, you know, hey, the Colts won by 20. And I'm like, yeah, that, I, I can also picture that happening. Like, the, you, you just never know what to expect. So here's what I expect. The Colts are a three point favorite at home. The Raiders are two and five on the road. They have not been getting wins. Um, uh, on their, I mean, losers are two of their last three on the road. They did beat the Chiefs, though, right? There is that, right? Yeah, there. They, <laughs> they did beat the Chiefs. That was impressive. I, I, I was they not are seven and that eight. At all. Um, they are, they are, they are not winning their division. They are not a a playoff. They're like eleventh right now. So yeah, they, yeah. The, by all of the numbers. So I I went and you know I do my deep dive every week before we have this show, and I try to say who I think is going to win based on the numbers. The Colts are poor, uh, offensively, and average to poor on defense. Uh, but the Raiders might actually be worse. Hmm. So the Raiders allow more points per drive. They have a lower pressure rate uh, on defense. On offense, they're a worse rushing team and they're a worse passing team. Um, but they have rec- they have a good receiving core. Um, it's not that they're going to trot out a, a world beater at quarterback. It's that's not going to happen. Um, it is is a battle of the backups. Um, I think that there's some hope in this that this is a home Colts game, and the Colts are able to create a hostile environment for the visiting Raiders, right? And that and that would be the difference in the game. 
Um, if the Colts were like three and a half, four point favorites, I'd be pointing to that and saying, see, that's what Vegas thinks. Yeah. But they're only three points. You get three points for being the home team. So the Vegas thinks this is a even an even game going to overtime. Right. So keep that in mind. If this game goes to overtime, uh, Vegas wins a whole bunch of money. Um, because there's a whole bunch if this is a tie, I mean, obviously Vegas wins in the event of a tie. But <laughs> yeah. like the the thing about this is that the way the way I perceive it is uh for most teams, you can't really uh expect home field advantage. Can't expect that. But if you've ever been in Lucas Oil Stadium and heard how loud it gets, um, I might be leaning like, hey, you know, the Colts can create the kind of environment yeah. at home that is good for them. It gives the Colts a, a clear advantage uh, at home. That that would be the difference because the thing about it is I think the Colts and Raiders are more alike than you'd like, um, than you want to admit. Um, although the Raiders may be without Josh Jacobs, um, the Colts are going to, tr- are going to struggle here, um, to have any meaningful plays outside of like a Jonathan Taylor, right? You're going to end up trotting out guys that haven't hardly played. Um, yeah. and again, hopefully you could, you could see the defense, uh, take some steps forward, um, they, the Colts do have a lot of sacks and they have generated a lot of pressure Yeah, and, and are one of the better teams in the league at doing so. Um, so like I said, the hope, the hope is that the Pacers have a game plan for uh, Max Crosby. Yeah. The Colts. W- without, <laughs> without the Colts, without sacrificing um, offensive efficiency, without ac- actually giving up on being a, uh, a good offense, be able to move the ball both ways, but yeah, I it's an it's such an interesting spot to be in because like exactly like you said, like winning games here costs draft capital. Yeah, and it gi- gives the 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 organization it gives the fan base a lot of hope when you win games in a year that you you weren't so it's not yeah, relevant. We, we were win yeah, games we're, this year, and we definitely were not. I mean, we were not supposed to be winning the games this year. I think that's safe to say. Without, Especially without, after, yeah, without Anthony Richardson. But the thing about it is, you got a lot of guys on this team that like they want to win now, and and aren't aren't the kind of guys to say like, hey, just go out there and give it your best. You know what I mean? Like, no, I want to prepare. Like, we're gonna go out and win every game. And I think, like I like I've said before, like Shane Steichen has the whole organization on its toes. And he, and he's the person that came in here and said, "Hey, you know, we're not just folding. We're not just, you know, uh, shutting it down because Anthony Richardson's out. Like, if, if Garner Minshew's the guy for the job, then we're going to game plan. And, uh, you know, put together a game, winning yeah. game plan for him. Um, so I think, if anything, uh, this is a a tight contest all the way to the wire." And 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 I would would normally lean Antonio Pierce here and say like, hey man, this is a talented coach. Clearly these these players believe in him, but I want to more than I more than I should. I want to say, but the Colts have a unique opportunity to create a hostile environment at home, and could potentially just you can make it very difficult for them on offense. And if you yeah. have a smart game plan or make it difficult for them when they have the ball. And then when you have the ball, as long as you're able to manage pressure and score, you could beat this team going away. Uh, it's going to be that kind of night. Um, I, I I have that feeling, right? Where it's like, man, I hope the Colts, I hope the Colts fans just take the Raiders out of the game. You know what I mean? Where they just cannot communicate on key downs Right, because that's that's what I think. Especially when it's a, supposed to be a three point game, right? Yeah, it's going to take that. It's going to take disrupting their communication in order to get you over the hump here. Because, um, like I said, the there's it, there's kind of an icky feeling right in the air. It's like, oh, it's on us now. Now the Colts are going to lose out, so they can get good draft picks, you know. And it's that it, that is probably what's best for the franchise, right? 
Um, so keep yeah. that in mind too. Winning winning games this year, not only were you not supposed to win games, it's actively bad for the franchise <laughs> when you do, right? Like you either want to be winning it all or you want the first pick, right? Yeah. That's generally kind of the consensus. Uh, it's, I mean, it's the the sort of way these teams are are managed, right? They're either trying to win every game, have all their players and they're healthy or like a few healthy, a few good players go down and it's like the whole ship just falls apart. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, you be when this, when this game against the Raiders, then you got to handle Houston. Yeah. Then you to, have, yeah. Then you have to Houston, end the year. It's going to be. Yeah. I just this noticed that, you know, you know they don't even have in. when that game ends or when that game starts yet. We don't even know when that game is. Yeah, I believe it's. I believe it's depending on you know what, um, how both teams perform. Like yeah. say the the Jacks lose the, this the Jacks lose this week, yeah. which I believe Trevor Lawrence is is not practicing, and they are the, the Jaguars are going up against. Let me check, but I believe they have ah they're going up against the Titans. So the Jacks, know, sorry, not they play Jacks the are going up against the Panthers. Nah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's not great. But I mean, yeah, they could lose, and then if they lose, then it's uh, Colts, you say, Texans, you say AFC Trevor South, Lawrence, a non-participant in practice yeah. on Thursday. So, huh? That's interesting. So it's just like you said. It's uh, that's funny because you just said that too. It's like. They don't. Nobody really wants to win this division, right? Because you you gain you what you gain in getting to play in a. I don't know. The playoff experience is like invaluable, right? Um, and if you have a whole team of kids back or kids, I say kids, whole team of players back next year, and they've all got playoff experience. I mean, you're you're that much wiser. Uh, should should you have another good year next year? So. Hmm, what an interesting spot to be in because normally you would just say like, oh, they, they should lose this game. Hands down. Lose this one and the next one. We don't need them, right? But it's like, what's stronger? Yeah, you know, yeah, is, you the, is, the appeal, is the appeal of Antonio I mean, Pierce... I want to make the playoff. Me as Me a too. fan. And, 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 and I really, I, I try to watch, you know, the always keep the longer term horizon yeah. in mind. Yeah. I don't, I don't give a shit about the draft. I want to make the playoffs. Like I, I want to watch. I want to sit down with my friends, you know, and watch a playoff game, watch the Colts, and say, "Yeah, my team made it. My yeah. team made it to the playoffs." And you know, yeah, we we might go up against I don't know, the Miami Dolphins or the Buffalo Bills, and we very well might lose against either of those teams, or I don't know, against the Ravens. Of course, I don't think we are yeah. beating the Ravens in the playoffs, even though we right. did beat them in the regular season away from home. Right. I don't think we managed to do that again. But yeah, you know, I want I want to make the playoff. And I don't think you, you will be able to find a single Colts fan that's going to say, nah, yeah, fuck the playoff. I want to get that, you know, top 10 draft pick and right. get ready for next season. Right, because a lot a lot of people are already wringing their hands, thinking about what the Colts are going to look like, and it's like, hey, you never know what happens. You never know what happens. Um, everybody's watching all the time. You know, the, the one of the things uh, I've learned recently: there's no fan of the NFL like an NFL player. Uh, these guys are constantly watching ESPN, NFL Network, and they're hearing everything and they see everything. Um, and like I said, I think other other players especially are looking at the Colts and saying, you know, like we, we've just rehashed, was a rehashing some shit. The Colts had no business winning any games this year. Their starting quarterback got hurt early in the season. They could have just shut it down, gotten very bland, tried to take the air out of the ball and just run run the clock out on this season and not really give a shit about your record. But again, like I think I think it's a culture change when you got a new head coach, disaster happens and he says, "Hey, hold the line. Keep showing up to work, keep game yeah. planning to win, keep doing everything you can. He All showed, you can do is do he your job." He showed a lot of I mean, we we can now go back and say, "Hey, Coach of the Year. I can show plenty of of accountability. I mean, he let he cut he cut Chuck Leonard earlier. Yeah, 
earlier this year, like he cut what was what like can can you think of a more vocal leader of this team past three to five years? I mean, since since of course you know Andrew retired, I cannot think of a more influential player in the locker room mm -hmm. and the community, perhaps mm -hmm. than Shaq Leonard. And you know, the Colts released him. Steichen released him. And you're like, hey, you know, that preaches some sort of accountability. And I really like that on the team where you, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, you know, keep beating the dead horse. But if you ask me, you know, with Frank, sometimes it seemed like he was loyal to a fault with players. Yeah. Like there were some veterans that were, you know, they were not performing, they were not playing well, and they were, you know, they were, they kept on starting. Yeah. And now, you know, like Leonard got just 10 games. He did mm -hmm. not show up at all. No. Boom, you're out. I say I'm a Kenzie, you know, for example, he was brought in as a free agent. He has not been that great. Mm -mm. He's now, he's now, I, I, I believe he's not starting or was he also like suspended? Yeah, from he just the got team suspended. Him and another yeah. player, conduct him detrimental. Tony Brown, right? yeah, conduct detrimental. Like, boom, you're out. I don't give yeah. a shit if we just signed you as a free agent, you're out. And yeah, you know, and, and and I really like that. I like that, you know, sort of sort of like Bill Belichick that style of accountability and you know, no player is bigger than the team. Like that's mm -hmm. yeah, that philosophy, I love it. No one is bigger than the team, no one is above, you know, being released. Like you could be released at any time. Right. So yeah, I, I mean I, I really like that. I just realized that the Colts have the unfriendly matchup of Devontae Adams this week. So I'd be I'd be interested to see how the Colts fail to cover Devontae Adams and him have like 200 yards and three touchdowns and be the absolute difference in the game for them. Because um, that, that's what it always feels like, right? I mean, I hate to also beat another dead horse, but like the Colts have just been abysmal against uh, high caliber players forever. It feels like that there's just nothing that we can do to game plan enough against some people. And one of those people is Devontae Adams, right? Like he, he's exact kind of caliber of player that, you know, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking um, Devontae Adams, D hop, right. We had to deal with that forever. Yeah. Right. The, the Colts just could not defend them. Um, so yeah, that, That'd be about what I'd be looking for. Uh, if if I'm the Colts, like keys to the game is hopefully the home Colts fans make the difference in the game, and the Colts can limit uh, Devonte Adams' effect on the game. Because you got to think about what uh, who else is going to do it, right? Like there's just not there's not other players. Um, but there's everybody's injured for them, but it's definitely a winnable contest against a team that is not good on the road, two and five on the season. Like it, there is light at the end of this tunnel. In that, if you if you lose out, you get to pick higher in the draft. Yeah, and you'll have better players on your roster. Um, and that if, you, but the thing about it is, it's like the playoff experience versus the better draft picks. You know what I mean? But I think like uh, an NFL, your NFL team making it to the playoffs is like a cultural event, right? It's like yeah, it's something I mean, you feel yeah. like you feel like you're a part of. If you feel like you earned you earned this. Right, um, where we, yeah, know, I want to make the playoffs. It's been a couple years, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, want to give a, a have a better showing as a organization and team than the last time we went to the playoffs. We went to Buffalo and like drove the length of the field to start the game. Had yeah, fourth, I remember that fourth one. and goal from the five, and decide to not just take the points. And what ended up being a three point game, and do that three yeah. more times. And then I remember, the game. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I remember like you can check this out because I still remember it. Kimoko, you know, you remember Edge Rusher Kimoko Toure? Yeah. He he was off sides on a, on a fourth, I believe it was a fourth and one or a, like a fourth and two. And he committed, you know, a penalty, a flag that gave the Bills uh, like another that. first down. Yeah. And that was, you know, four extra points, and we lost by three. So you know, I, I, I remember, you know, the entire offseason being really mad, like, dude, your mistake 
totally cost us the game. Like th that's just mm -hmm. four points right there, and we lost by three. Yeah. Ah, and there was and 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 there also was I believe there was like two, or or was it just one? But there was a miss a missed you know field goal by, by Blankenship. Yeah. Well, um, well, they didn't use use him until yeah, later yeah, on missed, in the game, so he's probably cold going out there. Field goal. He missed the 30, 33, 33 yard field goal. Yeah. You should have like, got him damn. out there. Should have got him out there earlier in the game. And while his leg was still warm and you get him early in the game and then you get him again and he makes both those instead yeah. you lose by three and then, like i said there was uh four total opportunities for field goal points so that's 12 points and lost yeah. by three and here so, it is like, i mean could have won that going away yeah and, and you know i'm just looking at this you know four from three at indiana 26 josh allen passed deep intercepted by sa rogers Penalty on Indianapolis, Kimoko Toure, defensive offside, five yards. First down, they got a touchdown after that. Yeah. And, and it's Josh like, Allen, that's what you're rest. saying. So the, the Colts should have won that game by double digits. Yeah. And so, like I said, it would feel good to go back to playoffs with a different head coach. And, and you win a playoff game. That would be like, that would be through the roof to see that. I'd be really super impressed, forever impressed with uh, Shane Steichen in his first year as a head coach, lost his starting quarterback, got to the playoffs with a backup, and won a game. Hey man, it wasn't the Super Bowl, but that was our super that was our Super Bowl that year. You know what I mean? Like winning that game was like the biggest game ever because it kind of said we're back, right? Yeah. Um, because I don't know. Again, I'm gonna keep repeating myself. It ain't very often your backup gets you to the playoffs. Yeah. Usually that backup lets you down. And and for as average as Garner Minshew's been all year, I mean, hey, he's got you right in the thick of it. Game over 500, right? Uh, staring down the barrel of a couple winnable games here. It's not, it's not like we're sitting here saying, hey, they're playing a couple really good NFL teams that are going to get absolutely given problems. No, in fact, you went, you beat the Raiders at home. Then you play Houston, who uh, C.J. Stroud, their their rookie quarterback, hadn't played much lately. Been injured with a concussion. So, like like I said, it, it, it's not like we're saying like these are these are teams that are just too healthy, too consistent, and you know Colts are just up against it. It's like no, they're winnable. Um, and, and like I said, I, I think the Colts are, I think the Colts are better than a, a lot of the uh, teams in the AFC that are going to make the playoffs. I think the Colts yeah. could beat them. Um, of course I'd never sit here and lie to you and, and make you think for a second. I think they're going to go to the Super Bowl or even the AFC championship, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. Anything can happen any given Sunday. Right. Um, hmm. but yeah, I certainly think, I certainly think if you factor in injuries, and especially now that we've kind of had the conversation, it's like, well, you know, Trevor Lawrence is injured too. And it's like, oh, Jacksonville could lose here. Hey, Colts get a win here and they lose. That's a that's a big deal. Yeah. So imagine winning the division. First year head coach. Uh, at least, you know. Coach the, of the and, year? And yeah. Yeah, definitely coach of the year. Like, I'm going to take my chance and say, we, I remember, you know, us talking about it before the season started. We were saying, like, hey, we have a rookie quarterback. A rookie quarterback is a 6'5 guy with a rocket of an arm who runs a 4'3", 4'4". Win or lose, this is going to be entertaining. Then yeah. he went down, you know, we just saw, what, like two and a half games from yeah. him. He went down, and I was like, oh, man, he just got, like, he just got boring again. It's, it's going to be boring. Yeah. It's not going to be fun to watch. These final two games, you know, they, they are gonna be fun. Like I, I can't wait for Sunday. I really want to I really want the Colts to, to, to play. Yeah. I'm like, hey, you know what? At, at least it's not like, you know, last year where you were like, please, you know, get this to end. Like I don't wanna I don't wanna watch this any longer. <laughs> like last year just counting down like oh yeah, there's like two then, games. Yeah, left. and, oh, and I still God. remember like yeah, against the the Texans final game of the season against the Texans at home, and if I remember correctly, we we somehow managed to to also to to lose that one. Yeah, 
I mean, we we tied the first, and and then I believe we lost the final game of the season. Yep. It's like, how did we manage? Like, how the hell did we manage to lose? Yeah, by one point. Yeah, I remember now. They went for two. Like, they had a game-winning touchdown, and they went for two points. Jordan Akins. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's do. fucking hilarious. Like, how did you manage to lose that? <laughs> Texans were 3-13. and 13. Yeah, man, that, that was an ugly season. That was yeah. ugly. Oh, man, that sucks. I don't know how we managed to, how we managed to overcome that. Like how how, how do we do? Like how did you not possibly? just give up? <laughs> yeah. Like how how are we? Like how why are we still here? Because <laughs> now that I remember, you know, we had the Texans one. Then do do you remember the the Vikings one? The the Minnesota Vikings. We were up like we're up. I believe it was like yeah thirty points. Yeah. At the half, <laughs> we managed. I think to it was thirty three three. And lost yeah, or something like was, that. Yeah, thirty-three, three. Yeah, and it, yeah, it was just like one of those things where you, I remember <laughs> that Vikings game, and it's funny that you brought that up. I remember the Vikings game, watching that and being like, "There's no way, right? They scored again." Yeah, there's they, no way, yeah. right? They scored again. They're within one score. There's no way, right? Like the Colts are going to score on offense, and it's just like the Colts did not score on offense, and they scored on like seven drives in a row, and you're just like. <laughs> That's what, how you lose those games. But I feel like those days are behind us, and I feel like you get a more consistent uh, effort. You see more high-level play out of individuals, which, again, speaks to coaching. But, again, like I said, this is a week where you're playing against a team that is playing up to their coach. Like, I think the Raiders players and support staff wants Antonio Pierce as their head coach, and that's a that's something to play for. Right. And I get it on our on our side. It's like, well, Jared, we got plenty to play for here. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand for the Raiders to have Antonio Pierce as their head coach is like a big deal if he's to succeed this year. I mean, obviously, I don't want it to be against my team. Yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah, you never wanted it. Uh, and like, and like I said, all the numbers, I did looked at almost all the numbers, and there was nothing that stood out to me that was like, oh, the Colts are going to beat because they're just like better in those areas. It's like, no, Colts are pretty bad, and the Raiders are actually worse. So that gives me – that gives me, and, and that's all numbers-based. Um, but, yeah, it gives me hope. Colts get a, a win at home, are 9-7. And, seven. Um, and I, yeah, just going think, into... I just think they have to – I just think they have to win both games, I think. Uh, to guarantee a shot at the playoffs. Um, I did see today that there was a world where if you win this week, lose next week, you don't go. There was a world. Um, no, it was, yeah, it was if you win, if you win this week, lose next week, there's still a world where you don't go to the playoffs. So obviously you're kind of up against it because if you want the team, team goals, win every game. Um, to make the playoffs, that's it. You got to sell it to everybody, right? Because, like we said, you know, we've kind of figured it out this year. Is not everybody has the same goals and takes the game the same level of seriousness, as evidenced, like you said, by Shaq getting cut and by yeah. uh, Ron, what is it, Ronnie Brown and uh, yeah, Tony Brown and Tony Brown Isaiah, uh, and uh, Isaiah McKenzie Isaiah getting McKenzie. suspended here uh, late. That means they won't play the rest of the season, like the last three games of the year, they get suspended for three games. Um, so, yeah, it definitely it definitely all signs are, are pointing to positive. It's just about going out there. It's about who shows up on Sunday, right? Because it's, it's pretty clear to me the Colts are kind of getting some people back and the Raiders might be without. So that's a factor too. Um, but, 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 again, all I can think about, it keeps me up at night, is like Antonio Pierce might just be a really good football coach. Yeah. Um, and, and that spells trouble for a um, sort of middling ball club. But anyway, hey, we've uh, we've yapped it up, my man. <laughs> it's uh, about that time. Uh, happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year's. Happy New Year's, everyone. Enjoy the game this week. We will see you all after next year. Uh, yeah, next uh-huh. year after next week's <laughs> games. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>